Hello friends, this is an unusual video. This is not a Q&A, but I'm still joined by my lovely wife Lucy. And we're here to talk about um, Jordan Peterson's recent uh, interview with his daughter, Michaela Peterson, which Lucy didn't see, so I'll be t telling her about it as well. Um, basically, Jordan Peterson is my favorite social commentator in the modern age. So, historically, my favorite commentator was Bertrand Russell. And by the way, guys, he, Bertrand Russell is a socialist and a liberal, so don't uh, people get very uh, sensitive when you mention Jordan Peterson because they think of him as a right-wing conservative. Oh. But my second favorite one is Bertrand Russell. Actually, Bertrand Russell may be my favorite overall, but this is too much detail. The point is, Jordan Peterson is my favorite uh, social commentator of the modern age. I have great respect for him, and I've always had great respect for him. I advise all of my clients that are younger to listen to his lectures. I wish I had his lectures when I was a teenager. They would have uh, saved me a lot of time. I kind of came across uh, Jungian psychology uh, independently through trial and error, through difficulty and hardship in my life. And I did not have the opportunity to receive it directly from Jordan Peterson, which I wish I did. For those of you that don't know, Jordan Peterson became well known because he made a post on Reddit. He's a, he's a professor of psychology, I believe from the University of Toronto. And he became well known because of a post he made on Reddit originally which got a, a lot of uh, comments and got him some renown. And then he came out speaking against the policing of language in Canada, which was occurring around the transsexual movement. Uh, he was not bigoted, but he did not like to be told how he, he thought it was a loss of, uh, of uh, free speech. So he became known for these two things, but then he uh, traveled the world lecturing about uh, psychology, uh, about um, helpful, useful outcomes of Jungian psychology. And uh, he had famous uh, three-part debate with Sam Harris. Sam Harris is also a great fellow if you haven't listened to him. And uh, they debate uh, basically, uh, to some degree, religion. Um, the best uh, version of that debate, in my opinion, is the one in Ireland. You can see it on YouTube. But all three are great. If you haven't had a chance to watch them, I highly recommend that you watch them. Whatever your age is, they're not uh, age specific, but younger people in particular would benefit a lot from it. So Jordan Peterson uh, disappeared in some way about a year and a half or two years ago. He also had his book, right? Yeah, he also mm -hmm. wrote uh, the 12 uh, Rules for Life, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, that's a, But if you watch his videos, you sort of learn everything about the book mm -hmm. in those videos. Um, and so... He also has a daughter, Michaela Peterson. He's also been on the Joe Rogan show, but I highly recommend you watch his talks instead of the Joe Rogan show and watch his uh, debate with Sam Harris. But he's also been on the Joe Rogan show twice and he brought his uh, daughter, Michaela Peterson, on and that's how she became well-known. She has a YouTube channel and she has a podcast now also. His daughter and him both also famously, I should mention other things, they suffer from um, uh, autoimmune symptoms mm -hmm. and both uh, feel better eating a carnivorous diet. Uh, which is a restriction diet, which makes it could be true. It makes sense, although probably their cholesterol is a little affected. But Michaela Peterson had many joint replacements, so I completely yeah. understand. In either case, there are, in the last two years, uh, so he disappeared in, uh, to some degree, and then we heard a few months ago that he had been in a, in a rehab facility, and then that he was in Russia doing some kind of uh, intensive reha rehabilitation. And then finally, recently, his daughter, Michaela, did an interview with him, which I was overjoyed to see and also heartbroken to see at the same time. And not heartbroken because in any way he disappointed me, but heartbroken to see the suffering and pain he's went through in the last couple of years. So I wanted to make this video as an educational video for those who have not watched the video with uh, Jordan Peterson. And uh, also, to, although very little people have spoken against his, uh, what happened to him, to defend him in some way. So, Jordan Peterson is a, uh, has a PhD in, in psych psychology. Psychology is a study of how the brain works in a qualitative manner that is, to, 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 I mean, it's not a pharmacologic study. It's not a study of medicines. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Jordan Peterson was having a lot of difficulty, we found out from the interview, mm -hmm. sleeping. Okay. And because of that, his doctor prescribed him the long-acting benzodiazepine clonopin or clonazepam. Clonopin is, a, is, I think, probably the longest-acting commonly prescribed benzodiazepine. A shorter-acting one is Valium, which has a, probably a half-life of six to eight hours. And then an even shorter one is Xanax. Mm. 
Most people who like to get high use Xanax. Why? Because you feel it immediately, whatever you're trying to feel, which is the sedation, uh, comes from the Xanax quicker. What benzodiazepines do in the brain is they allow the GABA, they, they, they're GABA receptor modulators. The benzodiazepine itself does not agonize the GABA receptor, which GABA, by the way, is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. But what the benzodiazepines do, as I mentioned many times on my channel, is allow GABA to be more active at that receptor, modulating, opening up the receptor for the, for the neurotransmitter. So, basically what happened, it seems, is that he was having trouble sleeping, and he began taking uh, clonopin. And then over time, unfortunately, his wife got cancer. Now his, his daughter was also getting, a, this poor man, you see what happens in life, sometimes people go through serious adverse events in life. People don't understand. Sometimes when your life is going well, you don't realize some other people are truly suffering. His daughter was having another surgery to, for a joint, and then later his, his wife got cancer, a very serious cancer. They were told she was going to die, and he's already on the clonopin and is apparently unaware of the dangers of benzodiazepines. So he continued to use it. And then at some point he tried to stop using it and he developed what he calls a acacia or something like that. Basically what that is, that is a medical term, but basically what that is, is remember, GABA the neurotransmitter is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter of the whole nervous system. Mm -hmm. Inhibit inhibition is the opposite of excitatory. So excitatory neurotransmitters like adrenaline make you excited, raise your heart rate, makes you move quicker. GABA relaxes you. Without, if your brain is so used to having such a reception of GABA, it, your brain has to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. So receptors downregulate, receptors react in maybe ways we don't even understand yet, complicated ways. So when, and maybe you also produce less GABA. Yeah. So when you go off the benzo, what the, benzo is short for benzodiazepine, what happens? The GABA is less active in the brain. So for many people, this will cause a tremor. So alcoholics, by the way, alcohol also affects the GABA, the GABA receptors as well. So alcoholics develop what's called deli deli delirium, I don't know, I don't have any trouble with this, delirium tremens, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, uh, which means that they shake. Usually they have a neck shake, a hand shake. On the morning after they drink, they have to drink to continue. If an alcoholic is really, really drinking a lot, he may even develop the shaking while drinking. In the, case, in the case of benzodiazepines, it's sometimes more severe than what alcoholics go through. They often develop tremors, mm -hmm. severe tremors, when they're uh, off the medication, but, but also they develop seizures. And alcoholics can get seizures too, but recently in the modern age, we see a lot of seizures. For example, you guys will notice if you listen to rap music, which I don't uh, listen to anymore, but the younger generation of, of uh, rap uh, people are often dying of seizures. For example, there was that guy that had that uh, famous Mac Miller died of a seizure, supposedly oh. from benzodiazepines. Many of the other rappers die of seizures, and the reason is because of benzos. So benzos are very dangerous. What I wanted you guys to take from this as a, as a lesson is how concerning benzodiazepines are. Remember I told, I told you guys before that opiates, opiates can kill you because of, of basically stopping your respiration or your heart mm -hmm. rate when you overdose but they can't kill you when you stop. There's no evidence of that. There's no concrete evidence. There are some claims, but there is no evidence of that. Benzos and alcohol can easily kill you if you stop suddenly. And by the way, what they do when you're consuming alcohol to get you off the alcohol is they'll give you a benzo. But when you're on a benzo, they have to give you some other kind of anti-seizure medication. And even then, it's not very easy to stop. By the way, anti-seizure medication also works through the GABA receptors. Epileptics take anti-seizure medication. So, basically with Jordan Peterson, he was having, apparently, according to the video we watched, I don't have any inside information. I wish I, I, wish I knew him personally. I would love to know him. But um, apparently, they were having great difficulty getting him off the benzodiazepines because of the tremors and the shaking and restlessness and these issues he was having. To the point that in Russia, they sedated him uh, fully, they put him into a medically induced coma for a period of time yeah. to try to get him off the benzos and then they gave, now he's apparently in, in somewhere in Eastern Europe, I don't recall where, potentially in Serbia, where uh, they're giving him some kind of, it appears they're giving him some kind of anesthetic to deal with his, because the person who's uh, treating he's him still, is... A, he's still on, on the treatment. It must be because this last, like he said in the video, this last years 
you will have the tremors for years. Oh wow! This is not a joke. Like How two long years. How long he took the the benzo for? Do must you know? I don't. He mentioned in the video, but must be like two years or or something like that. And I want to mention another thing. It, although in his video he mentions that clonopin is long acting, so he says that the treatment places will try to get you off a short acting one and move you to a long acting. The truth is that the long acting benzos are more dangerous because your body doesn't have a time. Of course, if you're trying to overdose and you're trying to die or something, taking a lot of Xanax will kill you because it's short acting and very quick. But if you're taking a clonopin for a long time period, it's in the body constantly and you take it every day. Yeah, you're, you don't, you don't down regulate. You down regulate it completely and you don't re readjust mm -hmm. because there's no period in which your body has a slight yeah. uh, shaking or anything. There's no period. So when you, because if you take it every day, so when you stop, it's a complete shock to the body. It's it's really really dangerous and really difficult to deal with because, like Jordan said, it completely incapacitates you. You will not be able to write. You will not be able to function. You will not be able to see anyone. So, I wanted to bring this up because a lot of our viewers use GHB. Now GHB works through a different receptor, which was discovered through GHB studies, which is called the GHB receptor. As I said, many receptors are named after the drugs that they use, but GHB causes similar effects, although it is shorter acting, so less dangerous, but Phenibut, which I have not studied the pharmacology of Phenibut, but from my extensive experience with the different kinds of things, I'm almost certain it's working through the GABA receptors. Maybe it's working through the GHB receptor, but in either case, Phenobot is extremely long acting, similar to clonopin. So taking Phenobot in, for, for long time periods will, may cause you really significant effects. And as you guys can see, Lenny always says he takes three days off a week and four days on. And from what I can tell about Phenobot, the three days off may not be even enough to get it out of your system fully. So in the long term, this stuff can probably cause you to become more anxious for the rest of your life. In the short term, it can make you Superman or Superwoman. Because if you're a naturally anxious person like I am, you can go and take a, a, a small amount of a benzo, like 2.5 milligrams of Valium, and you'll feel comfortable. So if you go into a very intimidating meeting or something like that, it can give you an advantage. It can be performance enhancing. But if you use it consistently, or if you use it because of just, I feel bad, so I'm going to take this, you will never get that benefit from it, and you will go into probably the worst addiction known to man, period. There is nothing in my opinion. I've never been addicted to benzos, but I know a lot of people who have. I've never seen anything that horrible in my life, which is why it broke my heart when I saw what happened to Jordan Peterson, who is essentially a hero of mine. So I wanted to make this video in defense. The other thing is that, for those that say, oh, this guy was addicted to uh, benzos, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not a pharmacist. He's not, he's a, not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. Not a psychiatrist and not a neuroscientist yeah. either. He's not involved in those individual things. He doesn't do, he's not probably even reading the papers that we talk about on this channel. So he doesn't know about the different kinds of drugs. And he's probably not a, not a drug addict. And the other thing I should mention is that he mentioned earlier in life that he had an issue with alcohol and he stopped it completely early in his 20s. And people who develop issues with alcohol and then develop a dependency on uh, benzos are probably people who naturally have lower GABAergic signaling. Mm. L having lower GABAergic signaling makes you prone to anxiety, but also prone to, basically you benefit more than other people when you take these I drugs. Take drugs. Mm -hmm. So you take a little bit of this drug and you feel amazing. And so especially if he didn't know the effects of it, and now he's talking about in his video that people should be warned. And that's what I wanted to warn you guys about. So. Be very careful with these drugs. Watch Jordan Peterson because he's a wonderful person. And don't discredit him in any way because of his use of this drug. Everyone in life learns and he is, this is not his specialty. And even if it was his specialty, there's nothing humiliating or shameful in, ha in falling. What matters is you get back up again. Absolutely. Right? Anyway, thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time.